Jumping on the mic till I'm filthy yeah. rich. Got that scratch if you got that ish. You trying to come through to catch my flu hush. Yeah. Let's go. Today, I'm talking to my friend Genesis, who was the first woman to be named Houston's best rapper by the Houston Press. But rapping is just one of her many talents. It's Genesis Blue, PhD in psychotherapy. So I'm a psychotherapist, a licensed professional counselor, uh, and I've been doing that for a very long time as well. A lot of people ask me to choose, but I really love both of those things. But I also uh, love music because you're able to touch people that may not be right in front of you, right? I was born this way. I was born to slay. I'm equal, but not the same. Don't you ever throw shade. Self-proclaimed raptivist? Yeah. What is a raptivist? A raptivist is just like it sounds, somebody who raps who happens to also be an activist. Okay. And so, yeah, I rap, but I also care very much about my community and the things that happen. No, I feel that, because like, for me, some of the best messages I've ever gotten are through a song. Because music is the soundtrack to life. What's amazing about Genesis is that she is merging her passion with her rap character and putting them together. I think there's a real power to that. There's a real truth to that. And I think that that speaks to the city. You know, when we talk about being trill, true and real, she took those two and that, that's the living embodiment of that. After talking with Genesis, she invited me to the rooftop of Houston Sunset Coffee Building to perform alongside her and Patrick Johnson, a singer-songwriter who has his own unique take on rap music. He's gonna bless us some with some soulful sounds. Patrick Johnson, let's give it up. You're an accomplished artist here in Houston, Texas. Tell, tell me a little bit about your background. I moved here about eight years ago from Lubbock, Texas okay. um, to just be involved in, in different cultures, I mean, food, music, like, it's kind right. of inescapable. It's, it's right. everywhere. Yeah. Right. If you do right, won't you treat me wrong? Growing up, I, I listened to a lot of a lot of church music. That's how I kind of started playing. Okay. Um, there's not a whole lot of people that will let a junior high kid play guitar in front of people. So, right. Yeah. Is that, is that how you would kind of classify your music that you make now? No. Um, I mean, definitely more singer-songwriter. Just a hobby, sitting in the back seat. A lot of hip hop influence, um, kind of the samples and the beats. Yeah. How did rap music influence you? It's one of my favorite, if not like the only genre I really listen really? to, like on a daily really? basis. It's kind of uh, like comfort food for me. Like getting okay. in the car, it's just kind of the first thing okay. that plays. Cause we all do the same drugs. When I hear Sam Drugs cover, he's taking the best of both worlds and putting them together. And I think that's probably why it exploded the way it did. Sam Drugs was kind of like the start of that journey, I guess, towards the hip hop influence. I mean, I think hip hop uh, has, has way more influence than people give it credit for. Um, so it was kind of a natural trend for me, I guess. Right. By way of Fort Worth, uh, we got a Houston native that I'm really excited to see. Y'all give it up for Lou Charles. Uh. I remember H.L. Summers riding with that AC low Whipping Matthew Pontiac and Nimbus just to meet some That was around the time I set my sights on trying to seize the glow Even if we're in different genres, you, we could tell that we both appreciated what each other did When I was listening to his music, I could hear, you know, oh, those are hip-hop drums behind that Oh, that's a, that's a sample right there Oh, I could tell that he actually appreciates that art My mom played piano in the First Baptist Church. I remember being really, really little, and she let me lay under the piano, and so that the sound would come over me. And I knew from a very young age that that's how I became me, is through music and through sound, and, and uh, how I worship, it's how I think, it's how I party, it's how I do everything. Don Caldwell Studios is on the corner of Texas Avenue and 18th. You can't talk about Texas music and not talk about this place. History was made in this building. There's a reason a musician picks a studio, and there's a reason that studios become famous, and that's because of the sound that comes from that 
studio. Don Caldwell is the heartbeat behind all of it, and he's the reason that they sound the way they sound. I'm so excited that we're here and we're talking. So tell me what has gone down here and who's been in these microphones and what kind of music has come out of these speakers? Well, we started in 71. We did the music of Joe Ely and Terry Allen, uh, the Mains Brothers, well, the Flatlanders. Yeah. And uh, so all of that, that stuff that came through Lubbock in the 70s, pretty much everybody recorded with us. It's always been, it's about the music and not particularly slanted toward a particular market or anything like that. It's let's just capture what this artist is doing. I think that's part of why we have this West Texas sound is because you did that in the 70s and 80s. So what would you say is the West Texas sound? I think for one thing, there's, there's not any preconceived notion of what it's gonna be before you record it. And for some reason, that whole freedom of expression brings about a power and an energy to the music going all the way back to Buddy Holly. Buddy was a creator of rock and roll. He captured you know, rockabilly and rock and roll, and even the old 40 sound. He was really an influencer to this day. Anytime someone from West Texas gets a big hit out nationally, it changes the face of the, of the whole marketing thing for, because nobody knows what to do. No one knew what to do with Waylon. And Waylon went in and put this even Did eighth note Waylon thing does. out there, and, yeah. and and all of a sudden it's no longer kind of swing feeling, it's even eighth feel, and Waylon's out there mm -hmm. killing it. Let's just go all the way to the Dixie, Dixie Chicks. There were no female vocal groups in country music uh, at the time they signed the Dixie Chicks. Within two years, there was a female vocal group on every record uh, label in Nashville. Yeah, you know, it just changed the whole face of things. Why Lubbock? What do you think is so special about Lubbock, Texas? Artistic people could survive in West Texas. This whole flat terrain with not much natural beauty. I mean, it's beautiful, but in a different way. But it took a creative spirit to live in this flat terrain and build your own art. I love that. An artist can survive here. Have you recorded a lot before? So I'm working on my second album right now. Cool. And I'm Outlaw Female of the Year this year. For oh. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not even sure what outlaw means. Like, I'm a Christian single with a cat. Like, I'm not sure what qualifies me as an outlaw. Well, that makes you an outlaw. I guess it does. Yeah, I, you that, know what? That's what it is. That is. The tables have turned, That's John. it. It's turned. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, it's considered out. outlaw country, but I think the song I'm new today, um, I think we're gonna gonna reach into just a little bit of roots and songwriter type mm -hmm. song today. Okay. Yeah. Right, let's hear it. Okay. Probably need a tune, but I'm not gonna worry about Don't it. Don't worry about it. Well, if you're looking for love, go out and see the world. So when Don hears my voice, he picks the specific mic from the 80s, really vintage microphones. And, and when we listened back, man, I felt like my voice sounded really cool. It's really open and deep. Very good. Okay. Uh, uh, you want to come listen? Yeah, I definitely. I'll be right there. I can't wait to hear it. We're monitoring. I really like the sound of your voice with that mic. Cause I'm a bad Yeah, yeah that's you. real round. I mean, it's just a good match. When I was singing that song, I was trying to envision Terry Allen and Joe Ely, and they're singing some of these songs that have just completely shaped me as a songwriter and shaped Texas music. And just to be in there singing in that studio and feeling their presence, that was, was pretty major. Cause I'm a bad woman at a quarter after sounds so cool. What an amazing microphone. Thank you so much for having me here and let me play that song. I love your singing. I, I made a new friend, didn't I? Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I love it. Dronicom was, was a band that I was in for over 15 years. I opened up for Social Distortion, Morrissey, The Go-Go's, Cyndi Lauper. Was signed to Joan Jett's record label, a Blackheart Records. We, we started doing really well with the band, and the lead singer of Girl in a Coma is my sister. Let's watch tomorrow go. She got a little burnt out and decided to take a break and went solo and moved to Los Angeles. Kind of devastated me. It kind of left me like, now what do I do? 
I'm grateful that my bass player for that band stuck with me and we started another group. We, we chose the name Fea, it's a Spanish word for ugly girl, and we wanted to take a word and make it positive. Because being in an all-female band with Girl in a Coma, a lot of industry people came in and they wanted us to change our look. And especially being females, we couldn't have the out-of-bed look. We had to look a certain way. We had to, they asked us to lose weight. They asked us to be more feminine. I'm about to go to Alamo Music, one of the oldest music shops in Texas. It's been there since the 1920s. It's family owned and it's kind of like our anchor store. I haven't been there in years and I get to go meet Aaron Salinas who's gonna show me about the accordion and I know nothing about it, so I'm really excited. It's, I've seen it, it's part of my culture, but I really know nothing about it. There's a lot more to it than people are. I think, see? Yeah. So from me, um, playing 16 years, I'm barely scratching the surface of it. So you have buttons, mm -hmm. and then you have your left hand, which pulls the air in and out. Yeah. And then on the inside, you have the reeds, which produces the sounds. Mm -hmm. Essentially, if you were to take a harmonica, mm -hmm. you take three of them and just stick them on the inside, that's right. all you have is just pretty much three harmonicas. There's all the treble notes. On this side, you have all the bass and the rhythm. Yeah. And as the air passes through, you have the different sounds that are produced. All right, so in each note, it's something different. The air blows through the reeds, just like a harmonica, and produces the sound. This is part of our history. Why do you think we've adopted this instrument in particular? So looking back at the history of San Antonio, you see an influx of European immigrants coming through Texas in the early 1900s. Along with them, they brought their instrument, which is the accordion. Prior to the accordion coming, we had our Norteño music. Instead of the accordion, they'd use the violin, for example. One big um, rhythm that we actually pull from European influence is the polka. Right. And a lot of people don't realize that. They think it's a Mexican rhythm when really it's a European rhythm. A lot of the Hano music and stuff, I hear the polka influence. Mm -hmm. Tejano and, and Conjunto and all kinds of that music. It's, it's really the American you know, melting pot, and this is no exception. There's a lot of bands in town I'm noticing that are kind of trying to incorporate our roots. Do you think it's making a comeback? I think the accordion has always been there, it just hasn't been recognized. Right. Um, so now you see a lot of younger people coming and picking it up, and they, uh, they grew up with it, mm -hmm. and now they're at a point in their lives where they want to incorporate it into what they're right. doing. So I've never met with the accordion and I kind of want to try it. Here you go. Let's keep this on here. Let's give it a shot. See. Try going down to the other lower buttons. <laughs> well, that sounds horrible, but at least I can say I tried it. <laughs> so I'm definitely going to stay with drums, but thank you for letting me. Going through the journey and, and meeting musicians that I am and learning about new instruments, it, it gives me a whole new respect. And staying with drums, but total respect. I'm about to meet legendary Max Baca and his nephew Josh. The accordion is the tex, and the bajo sex was the mix. That's right. Every DJ was coming in and wanting to sell me mm -hmm. screwed CDs. Mm -hmm. Or they would come in and they'd have these logos around their neck. Uh -huh. Like, I'm from Boss Hog Outlaws. Right, right, right. I'm selling my stuff. Yeah. We're not going to get arrested for this. This is no. totally legal. <laughs> <laughs> Inside your studio. Yeah.